Like you, I was disappointed when the new Grounded update was delayed. I was also worried about how much new content would be added. The Shroom and Doom update added a lot of items to the game, but almost all of them were building pieces. This was great for those that enjoy spending countless hours building and grounded, but for everyone else, the three month wait for that update was a bit underwhelming. If you only focused on completing the new content, you could do all of it in one sitting, assuming you were continuing an existing save and had everything prior unlocked. The same can't be said for the Hot and Hazy update. This update adds a lot more content to the game than the Shroom and Doom update. There are a bunch of new items, new insects, and much more, and in this video I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about the Hot and Hazy update. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do before I look at the different items that were out of the game is to look at the map. So as you can see, the western side of the map here is now populated. Prior to this update, this entire area over here was not really showing up on the map. There were just, I think, a square here for the picnic table. So this is the picnic table, this is the sandbox, and this is the trash area. And what you're going to notice is the picnic table has a bunch of stuff on it. The sandbox obviously is fully populated now. Now one thing with the sandbox, there's no easy way to get into the sandbox unless you go through the black anthill, which is down here somewhere. So there's a black anthill down here. This is all a trash area, so you're going to notice there's a bunch of trash laying back there. There's a bunch of human food. You're going to find lots of ants back there. You can go from this anthill, which I think is somewhere down here, and ends up taking you out into the sandbox somewhere around somewhere around here, I believe. But if you're if you don't go that way, you're going to have to build up to this thing. So for me to get into it, I actually ended up building the clover stairs just to get up to it in this creative world. And then the picnic table again, you're going to have to build up to this thing because there's no, from what I saw, there was no way to get to it. So you're going to end up having to build some kind of either elevator or stairs to get up to it. And you can get on both the, the benches on both sides have stuff on them as well as the top of it. So there's a ton to cover. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go through the crafting menu and we're going to go through each one of these tabs and look at all the new items that were added to the game. So right now we're on the first tab right here and what you're going to see at the bottom is upgrades. So we have the salt glob, the mint glob, the quartzite glob, and the spicy glob. These are used to make your weapons better. So one thing that we'll talk about in just a few minutes is you can actually upgrade your weapons. So instead of just having the weapons have their base stats, you can upgrade them, I think up to level 10, each one of them. And that's what these are used for. Next up, we're gonna look at the new weapons that are added. First up, we have the Antlion Greatsword. And this is a new sword. It's a tier three sword. So it's the highest rated sword in the game. It's got a ton of damage as you can see here. And it's got a pretty decent attack speed. You're gonna need the antlion pincers and the antlion parts, which you get from the antlions, which we'll talk about later on as well. Next up, we're gonna have the black ant shovel. So the black ant shovel is a tier two shovel, which you get, not surprisingly, from black ant parts. So you, I'll tell you where you can find the black ants as well. And this thing, it does have a, a little bit of damage and a decent amount of stun. You're gonna need this to harvest some new resources that were added to the game because they do require the tier two shovel. And then we have the black ant shield. Once again, from the Black Ant parts, this is a better shield than the Weevil shield. So although it doesn't say it on here, it's a tier two. It doesn't say exactly how much extra blocking strength it has, but because it's a tier two, it's gonna give you extra blocking strength. So it's gonna be better than the Weevil shield. Next up, let's take a look at the new armors that were added to the game. So first up for the headpieces, we have the Antline Wide Brim. So this is a headpiece that you put on. It gives you sizzle protection and is light armor. So you're gonna notice this is a new thing. Each type of armor now, has a different classification. So there's light, heavy, and medium. Let's see what's medium. So we got medium as the B. And what this means is light armor will give you less, you'll lose, you'll use less stamina when you're attacking, but it's gonna give you less defense. Whereas the heavy armor is gonna give you more defense, but you're gonna use more stamina when attacking. And the medium armor is gonna have no change to the stamina you use. And the antlion full set bonus is gonna give you Faster reload speed in combat with bows and crossbows. So you're gonna get the sizzle protection, which we'll talk about just a little bit later. And then if you get the full set, you're gonna get faster reload speed in combat with bows and crossbows. Next up, we have the crusty roly poly helmet. This is gonna give you a block stun. So blocking attacks build stun gauge on enemies. This means when you're attacking an enemy, you know sometimes they get a chance to be stunned where they have like stars around their head and they they're unable to attack you. So this is gonna help you improve that by blocking. And it doesn't have to be a perfect block. Any block will actually help you build the stun meter against the insects. Next up is going to be the Black Ant Helmet. And the Black Ant Helmet status effect is all attacks build extra stun gauge. So once again, there seems to be a little bit of a focus now on stunning enemies. 
which is cool. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then the full set bonus for the black ant armor will be reflect a portion of damage dealt back to the attacker. That means if an insect attacks you or if another player attacks you, a portion of the attack damage they do to you will be reflected back to them. That's a pretty, pretty cool bonus here. And as you're going to see, it has pretty decent defense here, whereas the other ant armor has very little defense. We'll quickly go down and look at the other parts. So we got the ant lion poncho, which is the body, which is the body protection. We have the crusty roly poly breastplate, which is the body protection. And then we have the black ant chest plate, same thing, body protection. Scrolling down here, we have the ant lion spurs. They're going to go on your feet. The crusty roly poly leg plates, they're going to go on your feet. And the black ant leg plates, they're going to go on your feet. Those are all the armors that were added to the game. Next up, we're going to look at the health and healing stuff. So we got new, the food system was reworked. So basically the way food works now is the acorn bits and the mushrooms are considered snacks. So you can just eat those and they'll give you a little bit of, of your hunger re replenish. But we also have meals now, which are going to require you to cook them inside of the oven. So first up is going to be the spider slider. And what this does is it'll it'll say well fed. So well fed, what this means is you will not actually lose your hunger for eight to twenty minutes, depending on which one of the meals you're eating. So that's going to be definitely amazing, especially the ones that are twenty minutes long, where you can just eat that and not have to worry about eating the whole day. And then each one of these is also going to give you a bonus. So spider slider gives you a plus critical hit chance. Next up is mac and bees. This is going to give you plus fall defense. So if you're if you fall to the hedge, you fall from a great distance, it'll prevent you from taking as much damage. Next up is Fungus Bacho. This is going to give you attack stamina bonus. So good, good for people who are like me who spam their attacks and can never manage their stamina properly. Next up is the Boatman Fin Soup. This is going to give you extra swim speed, which makes sense because it is a, uh, it's made from the water boatman, which is inside the water and also the algae. Next up is Larva Yanya. I guess that's a playoff lasagna. This is going to give you extra critical hit chance as well. And we got Mite Loaf, which is going to give you attack stamina so another attack stamina buff and then last night we last up we got not was that nachos and that's going to give you fall defenses fall defense plus fall defense as well moving over to the building pieces on this page there were no new additions as far as i know let's scroll through real quick and yeah, nothing added there then on the next page we got the new production item we had no, nothing here nothing here nothing here i think we just have one thing at the bottom next up we have the smithing station so the smithing station allows you to upgrade your weapons. Real quick, I did create a smithing station here. So what you can do, I'm in creative mode. So unfortunately, my master save file that I have on survival that has 280 in-game days is not working right now. It keeps crashing. And in fact, while I was recording this, this creative world that I just created was crashing. So I can't actually upgrade them in creative. But what you do is you basically take these weapons and you can upgrade them up to level 5 using Quartzite. And then beyond level 5, you're going to need to use different things such as the salt shards and or the, you have to use the glob so you have to use the quartzite glob you have to use the spicy glob the globs that we showed on the front page and they'll let you upgrade them and then one, one, up to level five you will be able to get so let's look at the first page real quick so up to level five you lose quartzite and then once you get the going level i think it's six or seven and above when you have to use these the globs you're gonna have to pick one of four different paths so the salt glob the salt the salt glob will give you one path the mint will give you another Quartzite will give you another, and the spice will give you another. So there's going to be four choices when you get to that point. So that's just, that's, to me, that's a great addition to the game. It adds more depth to the game. It's making it more RPG-like, where you're having to actually choose your upgrades on weapons. So you can actually upgrade your weapons. They're going to get more attack. They're going to do more damage. They're going to get less, have, take less durability, which is definitely amazing. So that's the the new building piece that we have here, the new production piece here. Then over here on the miscellaneous page, we're going to have... I think the only thing on here was we had the broodmother trophy and i'm not sure if any i know there's no new stuff bugs we have the coziness meter which i don't know what i actually don't know what this does and the fact that it's so cheap seems kind of interesting i believe what i'm guessing this is because i did build it and i looked at it it could either be cosmetic or if i were to guess i would think that it, you probably place it in your house and maybe based on how much stuff you have in your house it maybe lets you sleep better or rest better that's what i would think it would be because that's the kind of off it would give in other games and the last one's going to be the firm the pheromone broadcaster this description here saying invalid minus game buildings and then only costing one crude rope leads me to believe this is a placeholder i'm not even sure if maybe this isn't supposed to be in here there's no way that this would only cost one crude rope there'd have to be something else here 
and more likely than not what this would do would be to attract insects to you so you could farm them that's what my guess would be then last but not least we're going to be on the resources page here so first up is going to be the gum nugget you have to harvest this using the tier 2 black ant shovel you'll find it in various places there's one inside of a chest somewhere and then there's others like underneath of the picnic table underneath of the deck any wooden place where someone could stick gum you might find this and what this is used for is to make a higher tier smoothies which i believe give you double the duration of what they currently do then we're going to go down here and you're going to notice that the ant the ant parts are now named red ant parts and black ant parts so those changed a little bit black ant part black ant head and black ant mandibles so right now there are black ant, there's worker ants black worker ants and black soldier ants that you'll find in the black ant hill we got the salt shard the only place so far that I found the salt shard was on top of the picnic table. So the picnic table does have a lot of stuff up on top of it now. It's it's most I guess it's fully populated. There's stuff up there. So we have the antlion pincer and the antlion part, which you'll get from the antlion. Then we have the sickly roly poly shell and the sickly roly poly part, which obviously you get from the roly polies. Moving on down here, we're gonna have the mint shard. So the mint has been changed. So there's mint shards now instead of mint chunks. And then we have the spicy shard, which is like the salt shard and the mint shard and then there's the quartzite shards where you can turn them into globs which then you can then use to upgrade your armor and what or you upgrade your weapons and last but not least we have rotten food rotten food can be used to fertilize your gardens so other than that there's a couple other things you can do one thing of note there are i don't have them unlocked yet because i couldn't use my pre my new save file there are four new mutations there's blade master spicy safety parry master and truffle tussle since I haven't been able to unlock them yet, I don't know what they do. I believe Blade Master is the one that's going to buff your swords. So we knew up to this point, we kind of knew that the only weapon type that did not have any type of buff or any type of mutation was sword. So this Blade Master is for that. Not sure what the other ones are for. Parry Master is probably for blocking. I'm like, I'm maybe pr Truffle Shuffle is for running faster or dodging or something. No idea what spicy safety would be, unless it's maybe not taking damage from something that does. I don't think there's anything in the game that does fire damage. So I'm not sure what that would be. So those are the new mutations. So one other thing they added to the game was in this in the hot and hazy update is the ability to upgrade your character. So you can find milk molars and mega milk molars around the map. And what they do, they look like are they just look like teeth. So it's a molar tooth. The white ones are the milk molars, and there's gold ones that are the mega milk molars. Inside once you bust them open, you need the tier two hammer to bust them open. You're gonna get a resource from it which allows you to go to Burgle and spend the points on it. And the Milk Molars will let you increase your personal stats, such as max health, max stamina, max hunger, max thirst, and max, max equip mutation slots. And if new players join after Milk Morsels are found, they'll also have the points available, so there's, you'll be able to use them. So basically, you'll be able to customize your character. You could say, I just want to make them super tanky and pick a bunch of health, or you could be like me, and probably I'm probably most likely going to go with stamina because I I'm always have trouble managing stamina in survival games. And then the last one, the max equip mutation slots. So they reduce the number of mutations you can currently equip from three to two. But if you max it out using the, the molar, the milk mol morsel points, you'll be able to get up to five. So you can actually have five equipped, which is definitely a great addition because one of my gripes with the current mutation system is basically since we could only use three of them prior to this update, you just basically ended up using the same mutations over and over again and not really using the others. And actually, if you look up here in the top right corner, you can see that I have two of the milk morsel pieces and three of the mega milk morsel pieces here that I found around the map. And then the mega morsels are a shared party, party resource. And what that means is when you use it, everyone will benefit from it. So all the players on all the players in your game will benefit from it. And that increases max stack sizes for food resources or ammo. And like I said, it'll be applied to the whole party. So, so a couple other things I want to talk about are the new bugs that were added to the game. So there's three new infected bugs. If you go to the haze area, you're going to see infected ladybugs, infected larvae, and infected gnats. The haze area has been pretty much completely reworked. So the haze lab before was pretty small. It has been, the beginning of it is the same, but then there's a ton. The back end of it was completely updated. So there's a lot more in there. It's going to take a lot of time to get through it. Honestly, I went through it in creative just to wander around it. It is massive. There's a lot of infected uh, insects in there so you want to make sure that you go in with a lot of healing items and some good armor because they're going to do a lot of damage to you and then the new five other bugs are added to the game black worker ants black soldier ants the sickly roly polies ant lions and meaty gnats 
I have not run into a meaty mat yet, but I did run into the others. The roly polies are mostly around around where the sandbox are. They're not in the sandbox. They're outside the sandbox in the grass. There's some trash area over there. Trash area was added over there. And then over by the underneath the picnic table, that's where I found the, the roly polies. The black worker ants and soldier ants are all over that area of the map too. I did see that black the black worker ant the black ants and the red ants do not fight each other. They were just walking in line over to the food to try to gather it. And then the ant lions are inside of the sandbox. I'm not going to spoil it and show you how they attack, but they do have a pretty interesting attack. And I will note that there was, I believe it was supposed to be in there, there was at least one wolf spider inside the sandbox. And then the picnic table has all kinds of items on it, including what I believe is the mini boss. So a mini boss has been added. The patch notes, it was mentioned in the dev live stream today, and it's also in the patch notes. They haven't said anything about the mini boss, but on top of the picnic table, there is a little maze area that's made out of mushroom walls. And I believe that's where you spawn in the mini boss because after, at the end of it, there's a chest which you're gonna need to unlock to get a key. It says Minotaur key, so I'm guessing the mini boss is some kind of Minotaur. Unfortunately, on creative, you can't spawn him in. And because I'm possibly gonna have to start almost from scratch, I'm not gonna be able to get to him today, so. Those were the new bugs added. Those were the new the new, the new mini boss, the areas that have been updated, all the new weapons. A couple of other miscellaneous things that were changed are the gas mask no longer takes durability damage. Some other things are creature damage resist. So all the creatures in the backyard now have strengths and weaknesses to specific types of specific types of damage. So the example gave, given in the patch notes were ladybugs. They're going to take only 75% damage from stabbing. That would be arrows and spears and chopping, which would be axes and daggers. So that means instead of it doing, if it was going to do one damage, it would only do 0.75. They're going to take 100% damage from clubs and miscellaneous weapons, and they're going to take 125% damage against smashing, which would be hammers. So that means each type of bug is going to have a different type of weakness and a different type of strength. So using different weapons, it's going to encourage using different weapons against each of the different insects. And currently the different damage types that they added to the game are stabbing, chopping, smashing, generic, explosive, fresh, spicy, and salty. Some of the armor effects were also changed. Grub armor has no change. It still gives you max stamina increase. B armor used to give you running stamina use was less. Now it's errors build stun gauge on creatures. So again, more focus on that stun. The spider armor used to give you a movement speed increase. It now gives you an attack stamina reduction. So I know a lot of people use the spider armor to wander around the yard as fast as possible. That's not going to be the case anymore. Ladybug armor gives you... Ladybug armor was unchanged. It gives you max stun shield gauge increase. But the set bonuses did change for some of them. So the grub armor, the set bonus used to be thirst decrease. Now it's attack stamina reduction. The B armor used to be errors build stun gauge. Now errors have a chance to cripple, which means they're going to slow the enemies. I think they said it was about 50%. No change to the spider armor. Set bonus, it still gives you stamina regen. And the ladybug armor, this is a big one. It used to give you passive uh, HP regeneration. It does not do that anymore. Now it gives you a chance to apply temporary regen buff when blocking an attack, whether it's normal or perfect. That's a big change because I know, like most people, I use the ladybug armor most of the time. And just having that constant healing was just amazing. Some other changes to the game are going to be raw science. So the raw science, some of the basically, it looked what, what they were saying was. For newer players, the the cost of buying stuff from Burgle with raw science just wasn't balanced properly. So basically what they did was they changed the amount of raw science it cost to buy different things. I'm not going to go through all those. You can basically just, if you've played through the game, you've probably unlocked them all anyway. They did remove the Alchemist Burger quests, which were crafting things, and they increased the science rewarded by analyzing resources. So one thing you used to be able to do is just discovering some resources would give you, would unlock you crafting recipes. Now you have to analyze stuff to unlock them or you can get brain power points. In addition to the raw science points that you're gonna get, you're also gonna get brain power unlocks. Now, because I'm playing on creative, I already have it all unlocked. Every time you analyze something, you're gonna get different levels of brain power. On my master file, when it let me, the biggest say, the big survival world that I loaded, when I loaded it up, I already had everything unlocked because I had, it retroactively gave me all the brain power points that I had, so I'd already maxed them out. And the purpose of this is basically, if you don't find something like, for example, if you don't if you don't kill an ant, you won't know you're gonna get you can get ant armor. But if you've gotten the level two, it'll basically show you these things. So it'll give you the crafting recipes here. So it's basically just a second way of unlocking crafting recipes without having to analyze everything. So some of the mutations have changed. Fresh defense now has a is now a level three mutation, 
and you get it by eating mint chunks instead of just discovering them. So there's three levels to it. You unlock level one by eating one, level two by eating five, and level three by eating ten. So you're gonna have to go find those mint chunks. You're not gonna just be able to go to the mint caps and just eat all those. You're gonna have to go farm them from the different places where they respawn. And each one of those just gives you a buff. So they they still give you the same buff, which is gas and burning damage re resistance. They also give you sizzle rate reduction. That's the one thing we didn't talk about, which I'll get to in a second, is the sizzle. And then Grassmaster has been updated. It refunds stamina. Amount of stamina refunded increased per level of the mutation. And then meat shield and buff lungs were increased by 50%. So all the weapon buffs, which they call class mutations, have been changed. So for example, Chopper, which used to buff axe, damages, axe damage, where you would do more damage with an axe. Instead of doing that now, it gives you interrupts the current action of the target, which means it'll stagger them. Smasher slows the attack speed of the target. Barbarian attack damage bonus, it, it puts you in the rage status. It gives you attack bonus while rage and unable to perfect block while rage. So I guess that's a trade-off. Assassin damage over time that stacks with other sources like poison, gas, etc. Sharpshooter provides bows with a chance to root, which means it'll disable the movement for a short time. So that's a, I guess, a snare. Javelinier provides spears with a chance to cripple, which slows movement speed. That's also a snare. And then Blade Master, which is the new buff for swords, will give you restores durability of the weapon. That'd be great because I know the the swords. One reason I didn't like the swords and even the daggers was because, although the dagger doesn't benefit from this, but the swords they attack so fast you end up burning through the durability much much quicker. So the Blade Master is going to definitely help with that. So if you're using swords, make sure you use that. And then it says the chance for the proc effects is increased as mutation is leveled up. So in my video about the sandbox update, I, I suggested that they add something like sunburn, where if you're in the sun too long inside the sandbox, that you'll actually take damage over time. And they added something like, similar to that. It's called sizzling. So if you're in the sandbox and you're wandering around, you will have a little meter that will say sizzling. And if it runs out, you end up dying. So you need to find shade. So there's various places where you can find shade. There's different toys that are inside of the sandbox. You can also hide under the water. There's basically just different places where there's shade. So if the sizzle, if you don't have that sizzle protection from the antlion armor or from some other way of getting it, you're gonna end up having to get into the shade. So that's the sizzle effect that was added to the sandbox. And then there's a bunch of other changes in this patch. I will leave a link to the patch notes down in the description below because I don't want to go through every little thing. This thing is pages and it's a couple pages of patch notes. I think I covered all of the main things that I wanted to talk about up to this point. So that's everything you need to know about the hot and hazy update. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite new addition to Grounded. If you found this video helpful, make sure to click the like button below as it will help get this video out to more Grounded players just like you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.